guys, what is up? And we are back with another one today. We are going to be reacting to true scary animations. Now, I might get scared. I might get nightmares. But I don't care. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right, guys. First animation is from Llama Arts. Bum, bum, bum. Now you should go subscribe to Llama Arts. They're really good people. And yeah, the one-headed. Is... Moonlight here through my window as I jolt Don't away. My clip. There we go. My box is smaller. Now we can see. Amorous breaths disturb the silence of my dark room. I had just come out of a frightful dream that had me thinking it was all too real. Why would you? With sweat on. First of all, why would you sleep with your head? I mean, with your door open. That's stupid. My brow. I sat up and grabbed my water from the nightstand and took a sip from the now warmed glass. Okay. My hands. Sh well, try to make my camera bigger. This is okay. First of all, why would you have? I don't know what I'm saying. Shook as I recounted my nightmare of the horn-headed man. In my dream, I was walking through my neighborhood, the street lights flickering as I made my way down the uninhabited sidewalk. Nothing threatening, just a walk through the midnight hours. A block down, I could see a figure in the distance, walking slowly towards me. His steps seemed mismatched and labored. He passed a few houses looking straight ahead, either looking... First of all, ew. Why would there be a man? That is Hornhead. Hold on. The phone's going weird again. Uh... Okay left nor right. His head was fixed on the sidewalk in front of him. As I was getting closer to my home, I could see him slowly starting to embark on my territory. I quickly rushed to my front door and hurried inside. Through my window, I could see him walk past my property. I was thinking to myself, oh God, please have him keep going, please. He was just about to walk all the way past my front yard when he stopped. His body almost shifted abnormally as he turned to face my home. He just stood there, looking, not moving, just standing there. The man bore the horned head of a skeletal goat. His body was pale and looked fragile, and his fingers were thin and bony. I thought to myself, what is he? Hey. I'm on making a video of reacting to true scary animation. Uh, what's all this shit? Your mother stopped. Daddy, don't curse. People get near you. Oh, what is all this? Your mother? She uh, stopped all your guys' clothes in here. Don't talk about that, Jake. Daddy, people get near you. It's Yeah, throw up. It's probably it. Throw up. Because Jesus threw up on the ground. Dirt bomb. Daddy. Hey. Mozzarella. He's weird. Just go, 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 go. Okay. Okay. Let's resume this. What? I don't care. Slowly, he started lifting a quivering arm and pointed right at me. I started to backpedal into the darkness of my house when all of a sudden he let it out. That's what I got. Frightened to go back to bed, I turned on the television and saw that the local news for early risers was on. My stomach dropped, 
my body suddenly turned cold as I listened to the current news report. News anchor on the television said, Breaking news. A woman who lived on Columbia Avenue has been murdered. Local officials say that they received... Be right back. Okay. I am so frightened now. It's an anonymous phone call from the victim's home. We arrived at the house at around 12.20. We saw the victim inside in a card which rested next to her. The sheriff held up the card. On the back of it, I could see the image of the horn-headed man. The officer started to read. One down. Slowly, I go. He then lifted his head back up. His blood started trickling from his eyes and mouth. I sat there shaking, and I couldn't breathe. Columbia is just three blocks away from me. I jumped out of my bed and ran to my window. Something within me made me want to look outside. That's when I saw him. He just stood there, looking, not moving, just looking. The horn-headed man, his body pale and fragile, and his fingers thin and bony. Ew, is it over? Okay, it's over. Next animation. Uh, the woman. Oh no, we're gonna have to watch it though, cause it's scary. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More details at the end of the video. Hey, the woman. This one's scary. You guys are gonna be freaked out. It was a late, moonless, snowy night. I heard the chilling cry of a bobcat as I arrived home from my parents' house, where we had just had Thanksgiving dinner in northern Michigan. Exhausted, I had finally made it to my bed when my pregnant girlfriend asked for nacho cheese munchies. Why Reluctantly, she... I laced up my boots and went to Why my car. Why would she want nacho cheese munchies? I don't even know what that is. Okay. Due to the cold, it took me a while to start the car, which only made me more irritated. But eventually, I got it started. Then I arrived at the convenience store to retrieve my girlfriend's mandated snacks. As I left the store, walking back towards my car, I saw a shadow of movement out of the corner of my eye. What looked like a person stood near the dumpster, just out of the light. I stepped towards the figure, and she looked at me with a giant sinister smile. Her face was so weathered, it looked like she had cracks all over her face. She was crouched down and appeared to be chewing on something. I looked to see what she was chewing on. To my surprise, it was a severed arm. It looked old, Goodbye. as if it had been rotting for weeks. I saw her glance at something in her pocket. I could see the outline of what looked like a pocket knife. As soon as I looked back up, she quickly charged me. I pushed her away. and then ran back to the convenience store. I burst through the door and frantically yelled towards the cashier to call the police as I turned to lock it. He asked me, What's going on? I scowled at him and said, Please, just call the cops. I looked back outside and saw the woman had moved across the street and was still scrutinizing me as she maintained her malevolent grin. Look, there's a girl out there who's trying to kill me. Looking over me, he replied, I don't see anyone out there, sir. Those words shook Mommy, me. Are you doing anything else? No. Mommy, I'm making you reacting to this animation. Even to this day. When the police reached the gas station, they began looking around for the woman while one of the officers asked me what had happened, and I told them the details of the encounter. One of the officers came back and said he couldn't find anything. I then took them back to where I first noticed her. We spent a few minutes intently searching, but there was no proof she was at. Oh, dang it. Uh.
come on. Uh. No. Okay. But there was no proof he was even there. The officer cocked his head and looked at me as if I was deranged and asked me in a judgmental tone, Are you feeling okay? I was about to defend myself and then I started to think. I am tired and I have had a couple of drinks, so I just told him, Yes, sir. Sorry for bothering you. I hope you have a nice night. And then I drove home. I got home at around 4 o'clock in the morning. My girlfriend greeted me with an angered but concerning tone of voice. She asked me, Where were you? Are you okay? So I told her everything that happened. Of course, she didn't believe me. I couldn't get to sleep that night. I sat in my bed questioning my sanity, wondering if it was all even real. Am I crazy? Maybe I'm just tired. But no, that can't be it. I... I saw it. But if I saw it, why was there no proof? Where did the arm go? Where did she go? Before I knew it, it was seven in the morning, and I had to go to work. I, like I threw on my jacket as I was about to head to the construction site, and I put my hand in my pocket and noticed that there was a hole in it. It wasn't there the other day. I thought, what if she caught my jacket as I ran? which further proves my suspicion that she was real. I couldn't believe it. My mind completely went wild until my girlfriend kissed me goodbye. I told my friends at work what had happened and they didn't believe me either. They made yeah. jokes about it the entire day, but I had my bowling tournament that day, so that gave me something to look forward to. I got home and hung my vest and jacket oh, up and rapidly hard. put on my bowling shoes and got my bowling ball. Um. My girlfriend looked at me with a pleasant smile and said, When will you be back? Probably around 11. <laughs> Don't be long. I won't. Don't worry. When I first watched, At around I thought 30, that the tournament the wife was had finally the finished and we had won. There's no way. I was so thrilled I had forgotten about the woman. As we were leaving, I noticed something at the other end of the parking lot. It was that psychotic woman. We stared at each other for what felt like an eternity. She slowly started moving towards me while waving her knife in the air and making cuts. I quickly jumped into my car and turned it on. As I looked up, I saw she was standing in front of me, staring at me. She slowly walked over to my window, and she said in a quiet, deep, and scratchy voice, Little pig, little pig, let me in. Frozen in fear, but I snapped back to reality when she banged on the roof of my car, screaming. I quickly slammed my foot on the accelerator and didn't let off it until I could see her anymore. When I arrived home, I told my girlfriend what had happened. Like last time, she didn't believe me. I really thought I was insane, but I tried to forget about it and get some sleep. I don't know. I'm still making my video, so. Oh, yeah, the owl, I watched this. Yeah, I did. It's so weird because he tries to be a superhero. Yeah, snowball. Yeah. I'll watch it later. So I'm making my video. Back in here? Where's Jaden? Where's Jaden? Jaden. Jaden? Yeah. What do you mean? Jaden. He's not in the bedroom. What? Jaden's not in the bedroom. I can't hear you. Nothing. Jaden? Jaden? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Guys, he was literally scared. The baby out of me. <laughs> huh? Oh. The camera went weird. <sighs> Later that night, I woke up and saw her in my room. All she said was, let me in, over and over, as she got closer. She then started shouting, let me in, let me in, let me in! Let me in! Come on, 
on, Paul. Stop being difficult. Let me in! I was wondering how in the world my girlfriend hadn't heard this going on. The woman was right next to me and held up a knife to me. That's when I fainted. I woke startled in my room, dripping with sweat. Then I remembered I don't have a girlfriend, nor a house, or a family. Come on, Paul. It's time for your morning meds. Let me in. Wow. But this is not llama or this time. This is not about my story, but some from my church, and he wanted to share his experience with anyone else. He's a 32-year-old man, and his pseudo name is Mark. He's a fairly big Mark guy, Fire? and this situation took place when he was on his way home from work. He said that he had lost his phone one week before this whole situation happened. So he couldn't call and get any help during this story. It was quite late, around 11 p.m. He had finished work and was walking to a taxi stop location. And when he got there, a few people were standing around waiting as well. After about two minutes, he noticed that there was a minivan approaching. Usually minivans are cheaper than taxis, and he felt tired that day, so he decided to take the minivan. He sat on a seat and there was a young boy seated in the passenger side next to the driver who was collecting the fare. And then, two other boys who looked like teenagers also boarded the minivan and sat in the seats in front of him. Once the minivan took off, after about five minutes, the boy asked if they would like to drink some Coke. The boys accepted and started drinking. And they also gave it to Mark. Mark was also feeling thirsty, so he took it but only a sip. Not much later, he started feeling drowsy. Just before he about laid his head on the seat beside him, he noticed that those two boys were already knocked out. After he laid his head down, he heard noises coming from the back seats. Two people were talking in a different language. The car was passing a big signboard that showed Crest Chicken Farm. No. And then he finally passed out. When he got up, he found himself inside a big shed-like barn, and there were some tools on a big table. He was on the floor, and the other two teenage boys were laying next to him. He still felt a bit drowsy, but he managed to get himself up as he was looking for an escape. He saw that the two boys were still passed out, so he tried waking them, but they wouldn't budge. No, As Mark was them. kind of a big man, he tried to see if he could carry one of them, but it was hard to do because even Mark was having a hard time to stand properly. And then he heard voices. He took a peek from the door, and three people were walking toward the big shed, coming from a house on the hill, which was quite close to the shed. Mark panicked and tried to look for another exit. He was looking around the place, and he found one at the end of the shed, luckily. He approached quietly and escaped as fast as he could. At this point, his vision was all blurry, but he managed to find a fence door and unlocked it. He heard the people shouting, but he ignored it. He just kept on running. When he finally reached his house, it was early morning, around 5 a.m. His wife was up all night waiting for him and ran out the front door as soon as she saw him. He collapsed and slept for almost the whole day. When he woke up and finally got a chance to explain to his wife what had transpired that night, he remembered about the other two boys who were still there. Then he contacted the police immediately. He told the police about the road signs and a big billboard for Crest Chicken Farm and other things that he could remember. About two weeks after, there was a police report about how they found two teenage boys' bodies in a lake and advised that when they examined the bodies, all their organs were missing. <gasps> Mark just stood in fear. And as the event was too traumatic for him, Mark had to quit a job for a while.
Oops. By the, okay. By the way, guys, this will be the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Can we hit 10 likes? Uh, thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Let's hit 20 likes on the video. Capiche? Peace.